everyone, this is Mindy Egan from Lawn Fawn and in today's video I'm creating an interactive card using Action Wobblers. Action Wobblers are a fun piece that you can add behind your die cut or stamped images. I'm going to be adding my Action Wobbler behind the Flamingo Floaty which I have laid out here. So what I like to do is separate out the pieces that are going to be the same like my pink cardstock, the black cardstock, so once I have those all laid out, I'm going to trim out small pieces of cardstock. This is just some plain black cardstock for the tip of the beak. I'm going to be using the textured pack of pink cardstock from Lawn Fawn. This has so many great shades of pink in it. So I cut a strip out for my flamingo floaty. I have a light pink that's also going to be for the beak. I'm going to have a, another shade from that textured pink pack I'm going to use for the behind piece of my flamingo floaty. And then I'm also going to be trimming out a piece of shimmer black cardstock for the sunglasses. So I laid everything out. I held it down with post-it tape and I'm going to die cut all of those pieces out. I'm going to add a little shading to my flamingo floaty using guava ink from Lawn Fawn and just a small blending dauber. I'm going to pick up some of that ink and I'm blending it towards the bottom of the floaty and also on the back of the head. I'm working on just a silicone surface that's going to kind of hold my die cut pieces in place while I'm blending that on. I'm also going to add a little bit of the shading to that extra wing piece, just adding some of the color to the bottom of the wing. I also wanted to show you quick how I clean up my silicone mat. So a lot of times pinks can really kind of stain the mat as you can already see on mine. I have a spray bottle that I filled with isopropyl alcohol and I just spray it on and wipe it down with a paper towel or you can use a baby wipe but don't be surprised if the pink and reds stain it. I'm going to assemble my flamingo floaty using some liquid glue. Now there's two pieces to the beak so the first piece I die cut out of that light pink textured cardstock and then the second piece I die cut out of black. There's a little circle die in this die set and that is going to go behind the eye. So it's going to give the eye, I did black, but you could use white too if you'd prefer. So I added a little bit of liquid glue to the back of my flamingo and then added that circle piece right behind there. Now I have my sunglasses that was die cut out of that black shimmer cardstock that I'm going to add to the top of my flamingo. And for my wing, I decided to add some foam squares to it. Now these are the thin foam squares. So there's not a ton of dimension to it. I'm adding it just to the bottom portion of the wing because I don't want anything sticky to overlap where the inside of my tube is going to be so that way I can place something in my tube. So that other oval piece that I die cut from a darker shade of pink, I'm going to add that behind my flamingo. So I'm just adding tape runner to the very top and the very bottom behind my flamingo floaty. And then I can attach that and that way I can put a little character in there and it's going to tuck right into that tube. For some fun added detail and to make it look kind of shiny since it's supposed to be a plastic floaty tube, I took my white gel pen and I just added some details to the back end of the tube and also behind the head to the sunglasses and to the individual feathers of the, the wings. Now for my background, this is going to be a completely ink blended scene that I'm using stencils for. I'm starting with the Ocean Waves stencil. It's a three piece stencil and I'm using the bottom half because this is going to be the first layer of my waves. I'm holding it down with my magnets on my mini make art station and I'm starting by ink blending on tumble glass. These will all be distress oxide inks that I'm ink blending on today and this is on the 80 pound white cardstock. So I'm starting at that top there blending down a little ways. I don't need to go too far because I have three more layers that I'm going to add to this. So I'm removing that top layer, bringing in the second waves stencil, kind of bringing that down about halfway and I'm holding that down with the magnets and this time I'm bringing in Mermaid Lagoon. Once again, just starting from on the stencil, blending onto the cardstock to kind of get that really soft look and I can apply as much ink as I want to make this darker. I can remove this stencil and bring in my third one and this time I'm going to be ink blending on Blueprint Sketch. So now also on these stencils, if you notice, it's hard to see on camera, but in person, there are some etched lines on these stencils. And I am using those etched lines to line it up with the edge of my cardstock. That way I know I don't have kind of some crooked waves. 
So I like to do that for all three of the stencils. I lined it up with the edge of the cardstock. To do my sky, I'm bringing in that first stencil that I had used for my top wave, and I'm lining the top of it now over my wave, and that's going to mask that off. So now I can bring in colors for my sky, which I'm starting with scattered straw, blending up little waves. I have three colors that I want to use for my sky, so I want to bring this up just a little bit so I can blend all of those colors together. My next color is going to be salvaged patina, kind of going in about midway point and this portion of the cardstock blending into that scattered straw. That's why I went up quite a ways with it. And then my last color is going to be salty ocean at the very top. So I will just add these colors. I know it doesn't look real great now, but what I'll typically do is go through all of my layers and then afterwards I'm going to come back with my blending tools and go over those lines again to help smooth out all of the transitions. What's nice about this is that I'm going to be creating a scene and adding a frame on top. So this doesn't have to be perfectly blended by any means because we're going to be covering up quite a bit of it. So here I'm just going back through with my blending tools and helping smooth out the transitions just a little bit. Then I can remove this stencil and I have this whole scene done with my stencils and ink blending. Now I'm going to add another stencil on top of this, but I only want it on the top portion. So I'm taking that same stencil I just used to mask off my waves and I'm going to hold it in place using some post-it tape from the back. That way the magnets aren't getting in the way for this part. Now I'm bringing in the sun ray background stencil and you can do this where the rays are coming from the top or from the bottom. I thought it would be really fun to have it coming from the side. So I tilted my stencil and I'm holding it down with my magnets. I'm going to try and make sure they are as flat as can be but I really do use my hands to hold those down a little bit more. Now this time I'm bringing in some Yeti pigment ink. I picked it up with the blending tool and I'm going to tap off quite a bit. You can see you really do pick up a lot of ink with the foam blending tools. So I tapped that off and then I'm coming in over all of those sun rays. So right now I'm just working in any of the open space, holding some of those rays down with my fingers because they can shift. And then once I have the main portion done, I can come in, move the magnets and kind of brush the rest of the area, just kind of going in the direction of the stencil so I don't shift it. Now I can remove my magnets, lift up my stencil, and I have this really cool sunray background. It doesn't look quite great right now, but once the card comes together, the background really does complete the, the whole thing. The images that I'm using for my scene today are, is the unicorn there is from Dream Big. I have some clouds from All the Clouds and that little coconut drink from On the Beach. So I have them on 80 pound white cardstock that I'm inking up with a jet black ink, which is alcohol marker friendly. I'm going to do some quick Copic coloring, starting with my coconut drink. I have E77, 74, and 71. I'm adding the darkest color to the very outer edges and then blending out with the remaining three, remaining two. For my clouds, I have B000. The unicorn body, I'm going to do some light grays. So I have C2 for the very outer edge and the inside of the arms and then blend out with the C0. I don't blend out all the way. I'm leaving most of the space white. I'm doing E53 and E50 for the muzzle and N6 and N4 for the hooves. Back up to my coconut drink. I just did a bright pink and a bright yellow for the straw. Doesn't matter really which one. I just grabbed something out of my stash. For the horn, I'm doing Y19, Y13 and Y11. And then I'm gonna go with a rainbow assortment for the mane. So for this one, I didn't mark down the colors, but I just chose like a two different, two different color markers, like an R22 and an R20, something where there's just a couple digits difference, except for that last one where I did a light blue and a light purple to make sure I got in the full spectrum of the rainbow. I'm gonna take all the coordinating dies for these pieces, hold them down with a low tack tape and run these through my die cut machine. Off screen, I die cut out a frame and this is using the stitched scalloped rectangle. That's going to kind of draw your eye into that flamingo floaty. So once I knew that that's what I was going to do, I can go ahead and start attaching my clouds just using a tape runner. I have one kind of hanging off of the edge there. I have a smaller one and then my second larger one. And I don't like to push down until I know for sure that they lined up straight, which these little cloud clusters did not. So I can pick that up without ruining my cardstock 
and readjust it as needed. I'm going to pop up my frame a little bit, and this is using these 3D thin foam strips. These aren't super bulky. It's no different than if I were to add foam behind any of my uh, card panels. So I'm taking these strips and adding them behind the frame, and they fit perfectly even with that scalloped edge. I'm going to add these thin foam strips all the way around the edge of the frame, and then I can remove the backing and add that to the center of my card. Now I did kind of test out and make sure that my floaty fit, which it does, but I want to make sure that I have even margins around my frame as well. Now I have my unicorn. I added a little bit of liquid glue to the bottom and also some tape runner to the back and it tucks in perfectly on my flamingo floaty. Then I have the little coconut drink that I'm tucking into his hands because you've got to have a drink when you're floating. And now here's a look at those action wobblers. So I got this and I'm trying to line it up behind my flamingo floaty and the unicorn. It was a little big. So I wanted to trim this down. Now there's a back piece, which is really thin. And there's this top piece, which is a really thick plastic. I trimmed mine down, but if you decide to do this, be very careful. It is really thick. It was kind of difficult to cut, but I was on a mission. I really wanted to use this. So I trimmed a little bit off of the top and the bottom. I just want to make sure I'm not trimming that spring that's in the middle because that's what makes it wobble. There is a backer on both sides to reveal a sticky piece. So I remove the backing on that top heavy plastic and I'm lining it up behind my flamingo floaty, which fit perfectly. So you're not going to see it once we attach it to the card. Then I can remove the backing from the thinner piece in the back and I can line this up right in the center of my frame. So then I can just push that down with my fingers to adhere it to the card front. And now we have this really cool action wobbler on the front of our card. So when you just flick your flamingo or move the unicorn, it wobbles like that on the waves, which I think is super fun and cool. For sentiment, I die cut out fancy wavy banners from some sunflower cardstock. So it has this really nice stitched edge. I'm stamping a wavy sayings in the Yeti pigment ink using an acrylic block. I'm going to sprinkle on some white embossing powder, tap off that excess, and then I can melt that with my heat tool. And this yellow is going to really pop off of our blue background. This is going to go towards the bottom of my frame. And since the frame has popped up, I'm only adding foam squares to the center portion of my banner. And then when I attach this, it's going to line up nice and flush with that frame. I have a couple finishing touches that I want to add to that. One of which is bringing back in my white gel pen. And I'm going to add some detail to the unicorn and also just a couple on my little coconut drink there. And then I thought it would be really fun to add some of this white detail to my waves. I did test it out to make sure that this worked on the oxide inks, which it did. It didn't fade back too bad. If you have a really thin white paint pen, that would probably work better. But the gel pen also worked for the most part. And then I added a little bit of the sparkle glaze to the unicorn. So now when I come in and I just kind of pull on the tail or the head, it gives this really fun wobble, which to me kind of looks like it's having a rocky ride on the waves, but I think it's a lot of fun and just a really great interactive card to do. And even though it is a spring that kind of pops up a little bit from the card, it really doesn't add any more dimension to it than if I were adding foam tape or foam squares. That finishes up my card project for today. I hope you enjoyed today's card. Thanks so much for watching and see you again soon. Thank you.